Eric Ten Hag has sort of kept his plans a little bit close to his chest. Here on United People's TV, I've covered the preseason in as much detail as I possibly could. But now we've got the first full interview from Eric Ten Hag out on the preseason tour. First full interview with the press, I believe, since his first press conference when he became Manchester United manager. And it's given us a lot of insight into Manchester United's pursuit of a holding midfielder. That's a big one. On Frankie de Jong and how he fits inside there. On Lissandro Martinez. On Christian Eriksen. On Cristiano Ronaldo. On signing players from Holland. On Harry Maguire and the captaincy. It's a, it's a big interview. And I'm going to run through all the main key points here. So you don't have to. Or maybe you do, but you just listen to me. So it's definitely worth watching this whole one. I think you'll enjoy this video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. I'm going to waste absolutely no time. A big shout out to Laurie Whitwell and The Athletic. Uh, James Ducker from The Telegraph. Uh, Melissa Reddy from Sky Sports. Uh, I use their articles, their written form articles, as part of this video. So big up to all of them. Let me run through it. Let's run through and listen. Now, some of this you may we may have heard something from um, Eric Ten Hag on, but some of it, quite a lot of it, it's new. So you definitely want to listen to it all. It's what Ten Hag said on succeeding where others haven't. And this is something that I felt probably a big reason why I was so excited when he came in. He goes, I must say I've got a strong belief. The big challenge until else until now, elsewhere I've been, I've got the maximum out of my teams. This is the project that is the most difficult. I realise that, but I'm here, so I'm convinced I can do it. And, I, and I've said that's such a major reason why I was so excited about Ten Hag coming in, because the, the ambition that he has, it matches the ambition we have as fans. We want United to be genuinely be successful. Ragnick, he wanted to do as good as he possibly could done, have done in six months. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was determined to not let the club sink any further. Uh, but realistically, we all knew that there was... We don't know whether he could take us back to that top table, and he couldn't. Eric Ten Hag, he really feels he can. He's capable. And he's put his own reputation on the line. And I, that was always a big reason why I was excited about why he came in. Next question here. He's asked about how he gets his message across to the players. He said, it's a lot of, let's say, a package of tools you have as a coach. Of course, training sessions, you have meetings, collectives, and also individual. And they all have their own theme and topics to process. Finally, it has to stick together. Structure in the team, platform for how we can win games. The players have responded well to the demands we have. I set some standards and we introduce how we play and I'm satisfied with that. This is why we started them off early with fitness, but also why I wanted to bring in a certain way of playing. It won't be done when we finish pre-season, but when we finish pre-season, we have to get results. So methodical in how he speaks. I like how he speaks. I liked how Radnick spoke as well and that didn't particularly work out that well, did it? So I'm not going to go a little bit overboard on that. It's almost like his semi... No, it's not even semi-broken. I think his English is pretty good, but his, his directness. And maybe that's the Dutch way, and I'm sure some uh, Ajax fans or some Dutch fans will tell me that in the comments. That's just a, a, the Dutch mannerism of speaking. It's to be direct. Some can see it as bluntness and rudeness, but it's just about getting the point across. And genuinely, <laughs> outside of YouTube, <laughs> that's what I'm known as as well. Some people consider me quite rude and blunt because I'm straight to the point as well. No point messing around. What's the point in small talk? Get directly to it. And that's, what, that's how Ten Hag's been managing. He's talking about a disciplined and self-governing dressing room. This is important, this one, I think. I think one of the issues when you want to get results is you need a team. Organisation, cooperation, you also need discipline. <clears throat> Lissandra Martinez. When there is no discipline around, I don't mean that in a bad way, by the way. When there is no discipline around, you will not find it on the pitch as well. On such issues, I'm quite severe. Big use of the word severe there. I think it is on the players themselves to also be severe to each other. Because they want to achieve success, they have to stick together. Sometimes there is a need for correction. And honestly, as I said, the reason I mentioned Lissandra Martinez's name there is to, is to bring that sort of different attitude and approach into that dressing room, into a dressing room which has, it's got 24 lazy boy chairs, ball is in the arms, legs up, spar at 3 p.m., Netflix at 5. That's just what these players have been doing for a good amount of years and getting paid an absolute bucket load of money to do so. But Lissandra Martinez will come inside that dressing room now and bring a different approach. Bring a different person that Ten Hag can point towards and say, right, this is now, here's my standards. You don't meet that, you're going to be out of the team. And I think that's why he's such an important signing, not just because of how good a footballer he is. And we'll speak about that. As I say, he speaks about them all inside this interview, but also because of the discipline there. Uh, this is quite an interesting one. He, asked, he was asked about his, how his interview went in the first place. He said, I think we cooperate well with John Murto. Really good communication. It's the same, I think, with Richard Arnold. I feel really comfortable with it. I think I have a clear idea about strategy. 
the way I want to play football, but also in the way a top football club has to be structured. We talked about those ideas and we agreed on the structures and the way we play football. Now we have to implement that. Now you'll remember that when Ten Hag was being interviewed, it was a long process. A long, it, we all felt it was a bit drawn out, but it was Manchester United being a bit meticulous. Manchester United interviewing Eric Ten Hag more than once, but at the same time, Eric Ten Hag interviewing Manchester United, making sure that we weren't just a complete bunch of, I mean, we are a bunch of jokers, but the idea that you wanted to change that concept, the idea that you really did want to shift and fix your recruitment department, which has got two chief scouts in who have, what, chief scouted what? They looked at 800 right backs and decided Aaron Wambasaka was the best one. Not sure that's a really good recruitment department, lads. I think you want to change that if I'm going to become manager. And however else that interview went, because as it was, it was a, as Laurie Whitwell points out, it was a bit of a risk. He could have just like nodded and done whatever he needed to do, but I don't think he did. And I think that sort of gained him a bit of trust among the board. And it's obviously trust which has been reciprocated in the players that we're looking and going after. I think so anyway. It's quite an important one here. The idea of restoring confidence. You can see that it affects the players. Now we have to cheer them, <laughs> cheer them up and motivate them. Hold up here. We are trying to bring the confidence back. That is one of the important points to get success, that you have self-belief as an individual and team. That's also a process, individual talks, for instance, and the positive approach. But sometimes it can be highly demanding because that's what we expect. To give them, and we give them feedback. If they don't, why are you not acting to your standards? That is a question I'm asking the players. I want to get the maximum out of the players who are here now. I think it belongs to Manchester that you are always looking for better, for competition, because that is a tool to lift as well. Now, I, again, I've always reiterated the fact that Manchester United squad, we were naff last year. But any good top-level coach is getting more out of them. I think you're seeing it in the pre-season tour game so far. I'm not looking at the 4-0 and the 4-1. I'm looking at how we played, how we applied ourselves, and how we put the methods that we've seen in training into action on the pitch. That's what happens when you listen to a manager and you understand what the manager wants and demands. That's quite important. But now, I suppose this is the juicy part of the interview that maybe you've all been waiting for. <laughs> maybe, maybe you didn't stick around, but if you did, nice. We're going to talk about holding midfielders, Frankie de Jong, and our new signings, and Cristiano Ronaldo. There's lots to talk about here. Let's get into the main part, though, that we're all waiting for, and that's Frankie de Jong. This is what he said. I don't know whether he was pulled directly on Frankie de Jong or whether he was asked around the idea of a holding midfielder, but this is what we got written down in the interview with the, with the, with the Athletic. We are looking for a player who can play in the holding midfield position. But it has to be the right one. There are not many in that position capable of the level we demand. When we can't find him, we have to deal with the players in our squad now, and we will develop one in that position. I will not react on a certain player. We need the right player. We have a list, and we qualify the player who has the competencies to play in that role. We will strike the moment the player is available. Now, what do you take from that little part of the interview there on Frankie de Jong? First and foremost, he's made it clear there that he sees Frankie de Jong as a holding midfielder. Which I think we all knew. It's not as if he sees him as a holding number six, but somebody who is going to be sitting deeper. Somebody who's going to be receiving the ball there. But also, the, 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 th the part of it I take away there is it's almost, it almost sounds like Eric Ten Hag would probably rather develop somebody from within rather than just sign a player for the, si for the sake of signing a player. Now, that's going to be a, a, a point of view that, well, massively splits fans. I genuinely can... Will, uh, I'll struggle to not consider this summer a failure if we don't sign Frankie de Jong. That's much effort and time we've put into going after Frankie de Jong as a football club. No matter what's been said in the press, no matter how long it's taken, no matter the fa all the hurdles we're working against, we're still going after Frankie de Jong. And that is coming from Eric Ten Hag. And I, I reiterated that in a video uh, on Sunday. But he's saying there, look, I'll go down and read it again. I will not react on a certain player. We need the right player. We have a list. And we qualify the player who has the competencies to play that role. But he's saying, look, when we can't find him, we'll deal with the players we've got in our squad. I don't know what I, I don't know how you want to look into that. You let me know in the comments. But maybe that's him into intimating that, look, and I've said this, there are not that many in this position capable of the level that we demand. He'd right, by the sounds of it, he may well rather have 100% Frankie de Jong or 100% of nothing. And deal with what he's got. And I tell you, he's going to be in for a head of a fucking shock if he tries that next season. Concerning. 
a little bit concerning for me. But also reiterating my thing, the thing that I've been saying so much. There really aren't that many players of his level, of his quality. And that is why we have been pushing so hard on Frankie de Jong. It's interesting to hear him speak about him, for sure. Um, let's go on to Lissandro Martinez. There's so much still to run through in this interview. So make sure you drop a like in the video and watch the whole thing. And I hope you're enjoying it. I hope my commentary is, is helping you understand and run through the full article for you. This is what he said on Lissandro Martinez. He said, we have good players there, but I think we need a squad that is also good and deep. I analysed and United last year were quite vulnerable over the, over the left-hand part of defence. He's left-footed and that is an advantage in possession, but also in defending. Brings a South American spirit, a controlled aggressiveness. I think it will really fit with Manchester United and our way of playing. He's not a tallest, but he is good in the air. I feel comfortable with that. Of course, you need the right balance. He has good timing. That's one of his capabilities. We bring him to strengthen the, not just the squad, but the team. Now, Martinez, for me, you can talk about it. He talks about there that, that controlled aggressiveness. I think Martinez is going to be far more than just a new left-footed centre-back for us in the idea that he's going to be crucial, one of the fundamental new cogs in this team that's going to build up from the back. It's all, a lot of it's now going to go through down the left and down through Lissandro Martinez. That is unless Harry Maguire ups his game on the right-hand side and we bring that much threat to the right. Or Rafael Varane does that. We need that on both sides. In the same way that you become very predictable going forward, if you don't have a threat on the left wing and the right wing, if you've only got one ball-playing possession-based centre-back on the left-hand side, odds are you're going to play out from the back through the left. So you, as an attacking team, you know that you can double up on that side because if, if, uh, if Man United go down the right-hand side, they're probably just going to hoof it. That's something to think about. But Lissandro Martinez is, is clearly somebody in some... A player who Eric Ten Hag sees as more than just a, a, a new centre-back. Carries a new discipline, a new ability from playing out from the back. Just so much more. And because he knows and trusts him, he knows that he'll bring it into the squad. But as well as that, we've obviously got more signings. Christian Eriksen. This is what he said about Christian Eriksen. He said he's an experienced player. Played in Holland, Italy, and especially in England with Spurs for a long career and also a lot of caps. I think the whole Premier League knows what he can do and what he can contribute to this team and I would call that creativity. Now, curiously, I actually haven't been able to find this quote. I've seen it on Twitter. don't know whether it's true or not. Uh, but it's saying that Ericsson can play in the holding position as well. I think his definition of the holding position is different to what our definition of a holding midfielder is. Our definition of a holding midfielder is more your atypical number six role. Your, your Wilfred and Didis. A holding midfielder to Eric Ten Hag is somebody who can play in that double pivot. Play in, as one of those two central midfielders, as far as he's concerned, there you hold in midfielders, both of them, rather than the number six. And I understand Christian Eriksen can play in that sort of role, more like a left central midfielder than a defensive midfielder. Curious he said that. Now, this is definitely something that a lot of you want to know more information on. That's Cristiano Ronaldo, right? This is what he said about Ronaldo. He said, We all know Ronaldo is a top professional and he'll be fit. That's the last concern I have. He is training. In that sense, I do probably agree. I think Ronaldo's. Probably in the gym, he's doing all of his shit, stuff that he needs to do. Outside of it, it's just doing it at the club. I've set my demand. We want to play in a certain way. A top player can contribute. And Ronaldo is an absolute top player in our squad. Cristiano is capable of doing that. In his career, he has shown everything. The players dictate the way you play, especially players who score goals, because they're extremely important for the team. You construct your team around them. I think we have scoring players, and the first two games have already showed that. I don't know whether that little... Bit there is a little nod to the fact that, yeah, we'll cover it out you, Ronaldo, just to let you know that. But also, the more quotes here, and this is from James Ducker's article in The Telegraph, and he's saying that he's informed, well informed, the Man United do have an option to extend and trigger an extension in Ronaldo's contract if, if we wanted to. Yes, he could stay beyond the next season, of course. I've signed here for three years, but in football, it's short term as well. We have to win from the start, so I don't look that far ahead. I've got a strategy and a process. It takes time, but in the end, we have to make sure from the outset there is a winning team. I'll be completely honest. I don't really feel like he's said too much more there other than what we've already known. He's absolutely planning with Cristiano Ronaldo next season, right? Ten Hag is planning with him. He's not for sale. He has no intention of sending him. He has no intention of talking about how Manchester United are going to play without him because he has every intention of playing with him. In that sense, 
it hasn't disrupted his overall plans too much, but it has completely disrupted everything in training because you're playing with somebody else. You're not, you're not training to play with that person on the pitch. So when Ronaldo drops in, I don't know whether, whether it's for these, the games we've got coming up against Atletico Madrid. No doubt he won't miss that game because it's his old rivals. Ronaldo does what he wants. Ronaldo's always done what he wants. Shit, he did what he wanted back, in, back at the start. He came to Manchester United because he wanted to come to Manchester United. He left Manchester United because he wanted to play for Real Madrid. He left Real Madrid because he wanted to play for Juventus. And he came back to Manchester United because he wanted to. And he will leave Manchester United when he wants to. He's that big a name. He's that good a goal scorer. But Ronaldo has the influence to do that. And he might be one of the only players in the world who can. But he does. But saying that, at the same time right now, Manchester United are not willing to sell. I have no idea how this one pans out. I worry that, uh, that Eric Ten Hag might have a lot of his, some of his hard work undone if Ronaldo comes back into the dressing room and isn't questioned. But how, how much can he question and dress down the greatest goal scorer of all time? It's, it's a circus I didn't want for him, but it's a circus we've got. But he's made it very clear. Ronaldo's not for sale, and he's planning with Ronaldo next season. I want you to let me know in the comments below whether you agree with that. I think that he could play in a pressing system. He'll just, we just have to play slightly differently around him. But then if we can get the service into the box, that's where you get rewarded for that. You've literally got the greatest goal scorer of all time there. Now, this point here on Harry Maguire, he goes in depth, really, when speaking about the captaincy, the armband, because I'll be honest, I was surprised when I heard that from him, that, uh, that Maguire's keeping it. If only because I thought it was a bit premature to say it. I don't think he needed to say it then. Certainly not before the likes of Martinez have come in. Because imagine Martinez comes in and plays like a captain. Maguire's just crap again. Then what happens? And you've got to take it away from him. Anyway, this is what he said. He goes, I always see the captaincy as an issue that I dictate. The team building for me is a really important point, And I always talk with a group of leaders. The captain is an important one. And I'm happy with him. It can help give him more confidence. I will support him everywhere I can. In the end, he has to do it himself. And he has the qualities to do it. We have a good centre-halves and Harry is one of them. He can play on the left side and the right. I think he's a first-choice player. He's proved it in the past, but he also have to pro has to prove it at the present time. Play 46 times for England. Harry's really impressive and I expect a lot from him. But there's also internal competition. That is what a club like United needs. You cannot win with the 11 players. But he's making it clear. He's, Harry Maguire has got the full support of Eric Ten Hag. I'll be honest, I'm not sure whether he deserves that after last season, after the levels that he put in. And I told you, it was that, it was that interview that sticks in my head before the Liverpool game. Like, our oh, two managers have picked me. I must be doing something right. And it's like the, the, like the self-awareness. is. Like, I'm like, my God, you really don't know how crap you've been, do you? You really, really don't. And I don't know whether Harry, Harry Maguire does yet, still. But he's got the backing of another manager. He must fucking train great. He must train like a demon. I, well, I think we all thought there was going to be Maguire and um, Martinez as our starting first-choice centre-back. But Rafa Varane, bro, turn into Champions League Varane again and you're getting in that team and no one's taking you out of it. We didn't sign you at the end of your career. Refind yourself. Refind your fitness. Come on, man. Please. Not that I'm that against Maguire, but I just do not think he can play in a high line. I do not think he suits this system. I think it will hurt us. No matter how good he is in other parts of the defensive game. All bad. Um, now, this is obviously a curious and interesting one. How much Ten Hag's been shopping in Holland? And for a lot of people, it seems a bit lazy. This is what he said. He goes, I would like to sign English players because I think there is only one criterion, and that's quality in combination with the price. Looks like English players are quite expensive. In fact, you cannot deny. In the end, it's about quality. But he's not actually saying there. He's not slagging off the scouting department anyway, which I think is the reason behind it. But it's not as if we just got a cheap signing in Lissandro Martinez, is it? We've just spent 55 million on a centre-back from the area of So I wouldn't say it's necessarily about price. It's about the players available. And that's what I mean. It doesn't, for me, it doesn't matter whether we sign someone from the second division in Mexico, uh, Serie A, La Liga, or from City. If the players are the right profile and it's been identified correctly to fit into the system and the team and it works like a dream, who cares where they come from? Who cares how old they are? Who cares how much they cost? It's about whether or not they're the right player or not. And as I said, I've maintained it quite a lot. If we had a scouting department that Ten Hag felt he could trust, I don't think he'd be spending as much in the Eredivisie as he is. Final note here. He talks about 
well, I think he was asked about the youth team or the youth, younger players who are coming through. And he goes, every new season is a new start. Of course, there is a past, but we don't have to look back at the past. We have to look into the future. Those players have high potential. And when we construct a team and they take the responsibility for their fitness, I'm sure they'll perform and get the right results. I think it's always a matter of developing. That's with experienced players and with younger players. I'm a coach. I'm not afraid. If players are good enough and are old enough, I will play them. We have a high standard and values and the team respond to it. We are happy with that. That sort of that comment there will empower the likes of Zidane Iqbal, Carly Savage, of anybody else who really gets opportunities on loan. For Kunda Palistri, we need some fight and, and, and excitement on the right wing. For Kunda Palistri, is your chance, bro. You've got a manager there. I told you it was a perfect storm for these younger players. Perfect timing for them to come through into the first team with Eric Ten Hag coming in as manager. As he says right there, the classic, the old one, but he said it. If the players are good enough, they're old enough. And I will play them. And I think that's true enough. I don't think that'll be enough, anywhere near enough in midfield. There's, there's nothing inside this squad. There's nothing inside these, these youth players who are going to be, who we could rely on week in, week out at the level that we need to be at. The likes of Iqbal and Savage have shown their quality so far in the preseason. And I'm looking forward to seeing their development across this season. But let's not pretend that we can then rely on those players to go and compete with the likes of City who have just spent 40 million plus on a bench warming central midfielder. Compete with the likes of Liverpool who have got a fantastic midfield. City and Liverpool. and che These youth players, it's all about bringing youth team players through when there's quality experience players for them to look up to. They need role models. Who the hell you got in midfield? Come on. We need to strengthen the midfield. And of course, that, 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 his comments there on this Frankie de Jong situation for me are probably the most interesting. That's the thing I really want to hear from you in the comments. But that's the full interview covered. As I say, a uh, big shout out to Laurie Whitwell and The Athletic for uh, putting this interview up together uh, and getting it documented down there. Also to Melissa Reddy and James Ducker from The Telegraph for me using their articles too. But let me know what you think about that full interview. I've covered it all there. No doubt I'll speak about it with you in the live interactive show. But I wanted to get this out tonight before the game tomorrow. I think it's a very interesting conversation. I want, to let, I want you to let me know what you think about it. So make sure you subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you soon.